Hey Cookie Monsters! I did a thing in 2017. I said that 2017 would be my year to get through books that were just sitting on my shelves. And then I said that at the beginning of 2018, I will go through everything and just purge all my books. Get rid of a nice chunk of them. So I think I did a pretty good job, okay-ish job, of trying to pick up books that had been sitting there for a while and reading them. And a bunch of them made it into this pile I have behind me of books to get rid of. That pile consists of things that I've been trying to get rid of for years. I need to still figure out what the best way to get rid of books is because a bunch of them are arcs so I don't want to like resell them or, or give them to someone that will then resell them. I might just like leave them on the side of the road and let people take them if they want them. So I basically have two components. My giant pile of books that's been slowly rising of books I'm like I don't need anymore or I hate or didn't finish. But then there's also more on the shelves that I need to go through. Originally the idea was to get rid of like maybe 40 like in addition to the pile, but like looking at my shelf now, I'm like, I don't want to get rid of you. I want all of you. This is why I did the whole like give myself a year thing to decide because I know I'm a hoarder and like the possibility of there being a hidden gem in there is like freaking me out too much, but I'm going to do it guys. I'm going to get rid of books I don't want. So I'm going to put you guys with a view that's okay, hopefully. I, there's no way to get all my books in here, but I'm going to come up with 20 new ones and then we're going to go through those 20 new ones and the big pile and then you'll see which books I do not think I need to keep on my shelves anymore. See, my books go higher than my light. So you're not going to be able to see the top shelf, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Is this good? Is this better? I'm sorry. There's still, you know, a glare from the light, but I think that's a good chunk of my bookshelf and you can see the pile over here. So I am gonna go through now and I'm cheating a little bit because I have a couple books I pulled aside before. Y'all four. Whoops. Okay, so one thing I might do, and I'm gonna do that right now, is like maybe read a couple pages of the first few pages of a book and then like if I'm suddenly drawn in and like, ooh, this is really good, then I won't get rid of it. Yeah, I'm bored of it. Bye. Okay, we've got four books. Now what? <laughs> I want all of these books. Oh, this, I don't need this. go through them you'll see that some of them I just don't want to get rid of because I like the color of their spine and they're part of my rainbow but I think that's a dumb reason and I should get rid of them. So this is the pile of books. We've got 20, and this is the other pile of books, and we're gonna go through them now. Uh, but just to give you an idea, I did get rid of mostly books on my rainbow shelves because they're like kind of random. A lot of the other shelves are organized somewhat. So like obviously I didn't touch my favorites. I didn't touch the contemporaries because the contemporaries are ones that like I actually want to read and like I basically want all my Cassandra Clara books and then those are like favorite series and my George R. R. Martin shelves. So there's a lot of things here that like I just didn't want to touch. But if I'm being honest with myself, I definitely could have gotten rid of more than what I chose because there were like at least four or five books that I picked up, read the back, and went, you're probably never going to read it, but it still interests me. Like reading it, I'm like, yeah, I want to read that, even though I know I probably won't. So I should probably do like a mid-year purge just to see like how much I can push myself later on. Okay, so I'm back and I actually have 23 books. One of them I might read right now because it's like a cute little kid's book and I feel like I don't want it after that. I think we can mostly summarize the books that I've chosen as number one arcs that I probably shouldn't have taken to begin with, two midlife crisis wife slash mom books, books about like someone who's like lost in their 40s with a bunch of kids that I don't know why I thought those would be interesting but I actually don't have an interest in reading them. Maybe one day in my life that will be an interesting kind of dynamic for me but right now not. And then the third one, books I've already read that I'm like come on do you really need this book anymore? You don't. We're gonna go through that pile and we're gonna go through the other pile and then we're gonna go through everything and it's gonna be fun. Okay, so let's go. In the category of arc I should not have taken, we have King Dork, approximately. I think I read the original King Dork book, so I was like, oh, I'll read that, but I have a solo and go, I don't need it. These next few books are books I mentioned in the books I'm going to read because I think I won't like them, so I should just make sure 
I don't like them, so I can get rid of them, but I read six out of the ten of those books, but these are the last four and I just don't think I want them. So we've got Hold Me Close for Necromancer and Necromancing the Stone by Lish McBride. I just read like the first page or so and I was like, ugh, I don't need this. Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. I know, I'm just, I don't need that, but Wither by Lauren DeStefano. I don't know, it just seems like too young for me and I'm just, nah. Book that I've already read, but I just feel like I'm not gonna revisit. Angel Fall by Susan E. I thought I would love it, but it was just okay. And I don't like it enough to like go back and reread the first one for the second one. I don't remember enough, to, so it's just not, no. Arc I shouldn't have taken. Anna and the Swallow Man. It's like a Holocaust book, but like, I just, I don't think I'm gonna be interested, so. All Fall Down by Jennifer Weiner. I might offer this to like some people I know who like adult books, but this is about a woman dealing with addiction. I just didn't feel it like based on the description that I'd be interested, so. Book I've already read but don't need to keep. History's All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. I feel like someone's gonna want it. It's signed to me, but I, it was fine. It was a good book. I just, I'm, I'm not gonna revisit it, I know, so. Your Perfect Life by Liz Fenton and Lisa Stank. I, I don't even remember, I forgot what it's about, but it's like the midlife crisis kind of book. I got a bunch of books from a publisher once. It was a really nice person I met. She's like, I'll send you books. And it was really nice, but only a couple of them do I really think I'll read because they're all adult and a lot of them are in that midlife crisis kind of theme that I just don't care about. Lies by Michael Grant. This is one that I kind of want to keep because the spine is so perfect for my blue shelf, but it's the third book in the Gone series. It's been so many years since I read the first two and they were kind of horrifying. I just don't really want to continue the series, so I don't need to own book three. Like, I don't own any of the others, just book three. Another one one that has the most gorgeous spine is Tankborn by Karen Sandler, but I did read this this year and it was fine. It was a pretty good book, but like, I'm not gonna revisit it. There's no reason to want it. The Murderstone Trilogy, a novel, another arc I shouldn't have taken. This is like not a finished cover, it's just got a bunch of quotes on it, but it like, this one sounded okay, but I still don't think I need to have it. And the book I've read that don't need to keep, Don't Get Too Comfortable by David Arakoff. It was funny, it was okay, kind of strange, don't need it. The Program by Suzanne Young. This is a library copy. I lost it for so long that they charged me the full price of the book and then I found it. I didn't return it, but I might just go to the library and be like, hi, I lost this book and I ended up paying for it, but I found it and I don't want it. Do you want it back? Because I just, I didn't think too much of the first book. That's this one. And I never went on to read the other ones. So I don't need this taking up shelf space. Book I read last year, maybe? You'll Grow Out of It by Jesse Klein. It was decent, but don't need to own it. It's a good one for a pink shelf though, I'll be honest. This one might shock some of you, but this is The Young Elites by Marie Lu. I didn't like it. I love her Legend series and it's the back of my mind, 2018 goal to reread that, but I'm not gonna continue reading it. I just never got rid of it because it's such a pretty cover, but like, I don't need it, so let's get rid of it. Another one in that vein is Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi. I thought it was okay, and I read it in like summer 2014. I just don't see myself going back to ever complete the series, so. Okay, with Shop Girl by Steve Martin. I just flipped through it, and it's like really pretentious. I'm not interested. That one I got for free, like someone was giving away books, so I don't feel bad. We've got The Comfort of Lies by Brandy Susan Myers. I think this is like one of those. It's just marriage falling apart, but okay, I don't care. The Sun in Your Eyes by Deborah Shapiro. Another arc I shouldn't have taken, I don't know, midlife crisis. Escape the Mask. This is the first in the Grassland trilogy by David Ward. I think I bought this. Yes, I bought it at Strand for $2. I don't want to start another series. It sounds decent, like the premise, but I just, nah. And then this one I might actually give a shot like right now because it sounds kind of funny. It's called Epic by Timothy Carter and it's like about the end of the world. And I don't know, it's, it looks kind of funny, but I'm probably gonna get rid of it. So those are all the books I'm getting rid of that I just pulled off my shelf. And to be honest, I probably could have pulled off a good 10 more, but I just, I can't. I'm a hoarder, guys. I'm gonna go through the big pile back there. A bunch of these have been mentioned before my channel, so we're gonna just make it very quick. Okay, I just read this this weekend. This is Torn by David Massey. It was decent, but I don't need to own it. This one. Okay, first of all, I never ended up posting, I don't even know what happened to the footage of my worst books of 2016, but this one was on it. I don't, why do you have so many stickers when you're not good? Anyway, I'm sad about this one because it's got such a pretty color spine and it goes so well with Stargirl, which is also my shop, like they're this, I'll show you. They're like almost the same color. It's so cool. I'm so sorry, I keep switching the angle, but whatever. Anyway, so I didn't like this book. I read it, so I'm getting rid of it, but I'm just sad about the color. Just recently read this, The Left Hand of God by Paul Hoffman. I don't know, it was like kind of dumb, whatever. And I, then I, at the end of the book, I realized it's part of a series. I definitely didn't care about it enough to continue reading, so no. I like picked this up and read like a, a chapter and I just couldn't. Blood Ninja. A lot of these were in those books I'm gonna read because I don't think I'm gonna like them. So like, yeah, I didn't really like this. 
I couldn't even start this. This is dumb. I don't know. I just wasn't interested and it's also part of a series. Definitely don't care to continue. Wicked Lovely. That was also kind of dumb. Yeah, so these were all... I was right about thinking I wouldn't like them. One of the books that I said I was going to give a chance and actually wasn't that bad is Such a Rush by Jennifer Eccles. It was okay. It still had like weird elements, high school drama that I didn't care about, but it was, it was okay. But I mean, I'm not going to keep it. Beautiful Disaster. Everyone says this book is a mess and it really was, but I made it to like 180 pages before I stopped, but it was, it was pretty bad. We've got Tales of the Dark by Kit Fennessy. It is so bizarre. It's just like these random creepy short stories and I kind of stop in the middle because they were just all bad. Outrageous Fortune by Tim Scott. Got. This wasn't funny. It was supposed to be hilarious. It's like a futuristic society where neighborhoods are by genre of music and then this guy shows up one day and someone stole his house and it's like not funny at all. I don't know. It was supposed to be a funny adventure but I couldn't get past like four chapters. Warp by Love Grossman. Like I don't it was so pretentious and boring. I couldn't even get past a couple chapters. The Loose Ends List by Carrie Firestone. This was so boring. The girl was like so vapid and dumb. I just continued reading until she like met the guy and then he wasn't that interesting to keep reading so I stopped reading. It was okay but like eh. Tonight the Streets Are Ours. It was a decent read from last year but I don't feel like I need to own it. Same with Dot Wave. I just, it was fine, but like I'm not gonna reread it. Don't need to keep owning it. After one of the worst books of 2017. I feel like I'm not gonna do a worst books of 2017 because like I'm already telling you what I'm getting rid of. I DNF'd this and it was awful and like don't read it. So obviously I'm getting rid of that. I don't know what I'm doing with this actually. This is just in the pile. I don't know. This is Tilt that I, I thought I was buying a book on Book Outlet, but I was buying an audiobook. I, I'm not gonna, I don't like audiobooks. Especially this. This would be so weird because it's like verse. Dark Horse by Cicely von Zegazar. It, it's not worth a second read so Denton's Little Death Date by Lance Rubin I couldn't even get a couple chapters into this I found it so annoying furthermore by Tara Mafi I thought it was like decent ish but definitely don't want to keep it all these things I've done by Gabriel Zevin a bunch of these books I mentioned last year if you remember and I mentioned a bunch of these in some of my wrap-ups from the year and like I said I didn't need them anymore so Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan it's the only one of the Heroes of Olympus books that I own I just don't need it he was like signing it at BEA so I took it and I'm like that's cool but like I don't need this at all. Delirium by Lauren Oliver. It was a okay series and I only own the first book and I just don't need it. We're almost at the bottom. We're getting to books that I said I didn't like like years ago. So really, you need to just get rid of this pile. Messenger of Fear by Michael Grant. That was weird. Asunder by Jody Meadows. I think this is like the middle of a series if I'm not wrong. I don't know why I bought this, but this is like an old book. Never Always Sometimes by Adi Al-Sayed. It was okay, I guess. Nothing special. Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac, Gabrielle Zevin. I just don't like her books. I just, I didn't like this. The Ables by Jeremy Scott. These are going back to like a DNF book video that I did a long time ago. I don't know. These are just books that weren't really good. Origin by Jennifer L. Armitrout. I didn't realize this was like the middle of a series when I bought it on Book Outlet four years ago. Don't ask. The Fear by Charlie Hickson. I'm pretty sure this is the middle of a series. I mean, I spent a couple of dollars of it on it on Book Off, but like, I don't need that. So, so they, so Sobe by Celia Reese. It's about some like, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> like some princess somewhere maybe? I got, I don't know, like halfway through and then I got bored. The Invasion of Heaven by Michael B. Cope. I remember thinking it would be cute and like interesting, but I got bored halfway through. I don't know what the hell this is. It's like the middle of a series that I took at my first BEA like four years ago and I was like really inexperienced. But yeah, I don't know why I took this, but it's called Mistress of Night and Dawn by Vina Jackson and it is like the middle of a series. I don't need that, obviously. This is something I bought in Book a 100 years ago and I showed it you guys in a hall and it's like it's like the book is like not set properly maybe it's a good book i don't know it doesn't look interesting it's called a conspiracy of kings i don't need this possibly also in the middle of a series because i'm an idiot and then the last one is the scorpion rule is another arc that i tried to give a couple chapters and then it was like this is not working so to be honest looking at my shelf if i do another video of this i'm gonna be really cutthroat like even more than now and get rid of like another 20 30 book that would be like in the middle of the year i guess so i just realized on my shelf i had separated this into the really pretty green section that is now falling apart because i took all the pretty books because i'm getting rid of them but i have through the every night by veronica rossi which i believe is book two i don't know it's so pretty okay can we like mourn the demise of my blue green shelf because like these four were like super good ones this was quality green blue spine -ness. now i'm like second guessing whether i should get rid of the series just because like 
I'm, this is destroying that shelf. There's just no more green blues anymore. So these are the books. The only ones I'm on the shelf about now are Under the Never Sky. Should I keep those? The only reason I'm, I'm thinking about it is because I love Cassidy Von Shea and she loves this series. I don't know if she still does, but years ago she used to mention it a lot. That's why. But anyway, I'm gonna get rid of these books because I don't want them anymore. All things considered, my shelves are still pretty, pretty packed. So this makes me feel really happy and reorganizing my shelf made me feel really sad. So clearly this is a good direction for me to be going in. Let me know if you guys have done an unhaul purge kind of situation recently and if you made you super like, I'm getting things done. So thanks so much for watching. Bye!